Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're test driving the 2014 Toyota 4Runner Limited, an old school SUV, a traditional truck body on frame design. I just love these things. So, um, you know, it's very similar to the one we just test drove in 2013. In fact, it's the same color, but for 2014, they've done some visual updates here. There's a number of new features inside, and this one has a few options that we haven't looked at yet before. So we're just going to take this one out today and have a little bit of fun with it. Having some fun with the 4Runner meant getting out to the desert and finding my favorite muddy spots. But before it gets dirty, I'd better back up and do our brief walk around. For 2014, the Toyota 4Runner received a facelift with new headlamps and a grille treatment a bit more chiseled than before. Our Limited has a neat grille and bumper with additional chrome. The Trail and SR5 each get their own look. From the side, the 4Runner looks pretty much the same as it has for a while with the exception of some new wheel designs for this year. Out back, a new taillight design updates the look. Optioned on our 4Runner Limited were automatic power running boards, a $1,500 standalone option. When you open the door, they spring to life. When you close it, they retract back in. While they worked well, I found them to actually be in the way at times, rubbing your shin unexpectedly, and they can be quite noisy from the inside. Once inside the 4Runner Limited, you'll discover some updated dash trims and audio equipment from 2014 forward. The center stack was redesigned slightly to include the latest Entune infotainment systems that Toyota offers. The system is easy to learn and use with menus more intuitive and simple than most. Sound from the JBL audio is not bad, but not top deck by any means. And yes, it offers connectivity to most modern devices via Bluetooth or plugging in. Heated and ventilated leather chairs are comfortable and power adjustable for both front passengers. The second row seats adjust for recline and fold forward easily for access to the optional third row seat our tester was equipped with. The third row seat is a standalone option for $1,365 which includes additional side airbags. They aren't really meant for adults as the space back there is minimal at best. Optioning the third row seats also cuts well into your cargo area both when they're up or down. When folded, they reduce the cargo area height and raise the floor by about 6 inches. When up, they virtually eliminate cargo area behind them. Aside all this, a welcome feature includes the manual control knob for the full-time four-wheel drive system. While not the full-tilt off-road system found in the 4Runner Trail, you can lock the center differential here and select a true four-wheel drive low mode. Additional system features for getting off the pavement include a hill start and downhill assist program which work through the analog brakes. On the Limited, an x rea suspension system helps reduce rocking and pitching motions when out here on the back trails. The Payoff is a vehicle which handles the dirty and rocky places with confidence and even a level of comfort you don't get from most crossover SUVs it competes with. Right now we're out on a washboard road here in the middle of the desert and it's one of my favorite back roads to really test these SUVs on because it really does put them to the test. Now I know it's not like some really harsh off-roading but it is far less than smooth. In fact, we go through washes, it just rained recently so it took all the smoothness off this road. So we've got that washboard vibrating surface in addition to a lot of rocks and a lot of branches laying in the road and things like that that you really need to avoid. But but the big thing is, is what this road does is it really tests how strong this chassis is. It tests how well the suspension is put together and it tests how well bolted together this body is. And so what I'm finding here is that the doors aren't shaking and rattling in their frames. I'm not getting a dash that's bouncing up and down and I'm not getting any rattling whatsoever in the steering or the suspension, no matter what I'm rolling over. And that is what buying this vehicle is all about. This is what this vehicle offers, uh, more than feature content in some of the other areas. And so, yeah, it's falling behind some of the crossovers in areas of, um, you know, what it has and creature comforts, but it's hard to find a crossover that can handle a back road this well. Ooh, puddle. Woo! <sighs> Okay. Powering the 4Runner Limited is Toyota's venerable 4-liter dual overhead cam V6 engine, which produces 270 horsepower and made it only to a 5-speed automatic transmission. 
Now, one area this vehicle could use a little more updating is in the powertrain. Um, I will say that the 4-liter V6, its its power and its delivery is what you call adequate. It's not stellar, and it never really has been. But the thing is, is a lot of the competitors these days are pushing about 300 horsepower in this range. They also have six and eight-speed transmissions, and what that translates to is better fuel economy. And it's really more about the transmission than it is about the engine. Because this is a traditional truck-based body-on-frame SUV weighing in at a hefty 4,800 pounds, it's rated by the EPA as 17 MPG City, 21 MPG Highway, and 18 MPG combined. In our week with the Toyota 4Runner, we achieved exactly as promised, 18 MPG combined. The IIHS crash safety for the Toyota 4Runner comes in with good ratings across the board with the exception of the new small offset test where it only achieved a marginal rating. To get top safety pick status, a vehicle must achieve at least acceptable in this test. Summing it up for the 4Runner, I gotta say, I just think these things always look better with a little coat of mud, don't you? It's just kind of the natural state of things, I think. As we look at how we score this thing this week, there are a few areas where it comes in a little less than five stars, which is, I like to give everything five stars if I can, but uh, that interior really is hurt by that third row seat option, I think. And yes, it's an option, but uh, boy, it takes a lot of space out of that load floor. It raises the load floor, and it's actually quite difficult to put up and take down. It's not an easy task. Uh, the other thing I'd probably do without are those motorized running boards. They are noisy, and if you um, you know do a lot of four-wheel driving, a lot of off-roading, I think there's something that could be easily damaged if you high center. You'd scrape those things right off, and that could cost you a few more bucks than actually buying them to begin with. Um, but outside of that, this is still my favorite body on frame truck based SUV that's out there. So this week I give it four out of five stars. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Uh, now I gotta go wash this thing.